Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another Scribble Time. Uh, I am your host, Nolan Lee. I am uh, the pet human of the panda. So we are going to get started here with doing a few drawing prompts. And if you guys would be so kind to comment in the, in, if you're on watching on YouTube, Periscope, Twitch, or DLive, uh, feel free to just comment with your suggestions. I'll try to get to as many as I can. And uh, if you have any questions too, feel free to a uh, ask them because I know there's a lot of um, uh, a lot of people who are interested in art and wondering how they get uh, how to improve their skills. So feel free to comment below. Uh, we'll keep this all family friendly as best as we can. And uh, for the most part, uh, it, the reason why uh, it, this video is not listed as family friendly is because I want to enable the chat so at least have people um, be able to uh, type in their suggestions and stuff because when I believe on YouTube, if it's not family friendly, you're not allowed to chat. So with that said, let's get started. So let me just move my art up there. All right, so the first suggestion that I received, uh, I received a couple on Instagram. One of them was to uh, make a panda cat. So, um, so I'm doing that. You guys can come up with your suggestions and type them into the um, into the chat. So there might be a little bit of lag uh, due to OBS uh, because I'm streaming art and I'm streaming um, my my face as well. But I guess I can always turn off the turn off my face because you don't really need to see my face all that much. So let let's do that instead because um, my face ain't that. You might not want to look at my face all the time. So, okay, so Panda Cat, uh, let's just do that right there. Um, so we're gonna just do the, the usual three three dashes for the face. I changed the nose a little bit like this, so the, the nose kind of ends up being like a bean, like that, whereas the eyes are kind of more like flattened, really flattened ovals. Uh, it used to be, I used to draw them like that, but then, um, and I didn't draw a mouth either because I thought that was a cool style. But then when I sh started showing it to people, they, uh, they couldn't tell like at certain angles, like which was, which were the eyes and which were the nose. So, um, I ended up making the nose just slightly bigger like that, a little plumper, made the eyes a little bit rounder like that. And then I added a little dot for the, for the mouth to make it feel like this is a face so um, so I'm just gonna go like this give a panda cat and I'm gonna give the usual panda cat pose or the usual cat pose which is probably lying down looking at you with a very arrogant disposition while um, here I'm just gonna and also sitting on something that he probably shouldn't be but he's gonna do it anyways because he's a cat and cats don't respect anybody so I'm just gonna go like that and go like that this will appeal to the cat crowd I'll erase this part right there. Uh, okay, so we got another request for a panda hamster. Sure thing. And then we'll just give it a tail. So I like to do tails as S's. So they could be like two parallel S's. Um, and we can just give him a little bit of a striped And here I'm just going to give him the band that he usually has. Give him some black ears because he's a panda. All my pandas have black ears. And then we'll just do the band like that. Okay, so that's, this is how I would draw a panda cat. Now the way, you'll see I'll do these little dimples here and there 
on the side and that kind of helps to separate the body from the head and to make it not look so uh, otherwise it would look like this where it'll be a simple shape which uh, can be fine in certain styles but uh, for this particular one I wanted to make it feel a little make him feel a little bit chubby so I added I want to make this cheek feel chubby so I add a little bit of a dimple right there so um, that's something you can also do for yourself um, and then I'm just give him a little leg right here like so and then we're gonna put some context to to the cat let's put him let's have him doing something like um, uh, let's see something typical everybody's working from home so uh, he's gonna be he's gonna be hanging out on top of the laptop like so so because I could draw on the computer I can make these really quick changes if I mess up uh, if I was drawing with a pencil, I would think this through a little bit more. So I'm going to try to draw like I'm drawing on the pencil. And so he's on a laptop like that. I'll give him a couple keys in there to show it's a like it's a laptop. Okay. All right. So we got one panda cat. And let's uh, maybe I can just give him a black tail overall because that seems that seems to fit in line more with the, the panda theme. And um, what I can do after that is a panda hamster. So, um, yeah, so let's see here. I'm going to just quickly check Facebook to see if uh, there's any suggestions on there. Um, so if you, I'm just going to do a quick post for Suggestions for scribble times. Suggestions for today's scribble scribble time. Question mark and it's on Facebook. Okay. Now let's go back to our regularly scheduled program and we're gonna do a panda hamster. And a hamster will be um, the hamsters are kind of shaped like a panda already so they're just I feel like hamsters are like coin purses with a mouth they're just little bags and you ever seen you ever seen like hamsters trying to store food it's really um, it's really cute and entertaining but I'm gonna trying to make this panda hamster a little bit cuter and chubbier so I'm just going to give him these really big cheeks and their their ears are kind of like mice but they're um, maybe they're not quite as uh, as big but they're they're pretty similar and then um, and their tails are and I'm gonna give him little arms but he'll still have the he'll, he'll still have them boxing gloves so um, this is what you call and so this is what we have for our panda hamster Because their yeah their bodies are pretty much like little bags so um, if they can fit their head through any opening um, or so long as their head fits in in the opening like they can make the the rest of their body can fit through because it's just a big squishy um, stuffed animal for the most part okay um, and also feel free to ask any questions that you may have or if you have any suggestions for. How, what you would like to see on this show. Um, let's see. Okay, and then, then Hans Kruger says, beautiful, thank you. This is a very majestic, majestic animal. And, uh, okay, so we got our panda cat, our panda hamster. Um, 
And we got uh, a Picard Panda. Hmm. All right. Uh, I haven't watched the latest sh latest series, so I don't. So I don't know. Maybe here I'll do this as a um, as a little joke for those of you who are familiar with Picard. So uh, let's see. We're gonna have Panda sitting here. And uh, this is why I think of Picard right. <laughs> this is what I think of Picard right now. sitting in a chair of some sort I think that I think the table's a little bit bigger so I'm gonna make it I'm gonna erase it and get it bigger like that and I forgot what kind of chairs they have but I know that Riker used to like high step over every one of those chairs okay of course we're gonna change the perspective a little bit because the so the pandas ears are gonna be slightly on top of the head like so I'm gonna make them a little bit bigger it's okay for me to draw in black and white too so I, I, if I make a mistake it's it's kind of easy to fix it so that's a little tip if you <laughs> if you uh, keep messing up I forgot what the Star Trek uh, outfits new generation outfits look like I'm just gonna look up a quick reference and see what um, that looks like oh yeah I think it has like a black band up here like the shoulder band like that and then uh... <laughs> yeah it's like something like this or maybe I could just make him just like face palm in general Kind of having trouble with this little palm because it's kind of bothering me a little bit. So I'm just gonna um, just slightly fix it because I don't want to make it look too blobby, like so. And um, I'm gonna put the thumb out like that, and then the hand like this. So one of the things that's tricky with the panda is always the uh, the anatomy, trying to make sh make it feel like it exists in 3d three-dimensional space so sometimes I, I have to f cheat certain things so if you actually built these in 3d models they they probably wouldn't work but yeah this one is definitely taking me a little bit longer than I would like to but uh, it's okay we're just here to have fun uh, let's see let me look up to see what the other suggestions are for for folks um, before I move on here let's see let me just fix this chair Let's give him a chair like that. Maybe I could put his eye there because his eye would be there. And then he has a his chair is something like this. Don't want to make it seem like he's falling out of the chair because I know in the reference it, it's like he's kind of falling off the chair but um, I'm just gonna quickly just make it like make it or I will make it so <laughs> yeah anyways um, all right so let's look at uh, some other suggestions here we got let's see this is all just black and white for now uh, or pips in the neck. Yeah, someone's yeah, someone's not a Star Trek Star Trek fan. Uh, Panda Lawrence playing piano. Okay, well, 
we'll have um, Lawrence, who's the composer and uh, composer and musician for my Panda Haiku cartoons, which um, we just uh, just released another one. It's um, it's based on opportunity. Uh, so I'm going to draw like a, let me just put this on another layer here. So I'm going to move the card panda over here. And I'm going to put the piano panda right there. So um, I'm going to have him playing a, a little upright. gonna be sitting down we'll just change this piano just slightly a bit the perspective is a little bit off but it's okay and then just give him a little bench for him to sit on um, his butt will be a little bit flatter when he's sitting on a surface like that so that's kind of why it's flat so you get a sense of how how uh, squishy he is in general so I'll just give him that tail right there Actually, maybe just go like this, and then the tail will go like out like that. Funny enough, uh, like I've seen pandas in the in real life, and they don't, they actually don't have black tails; they have white tails, or a little stub of a white tail. So it's not entirely accurate, but for this character, I mean, he's wearing boxing gloves, so how accurate can you be? Um, so I'm just gonna shade him in. Now, if you have, if you have a pencil at home, um, what you could do is you can uh, use put the pencil on its side, and uh, and you'll get a broader uh, broader tip, and so you can use that to shade. Um, I always recommend if you're trying to get if you're trying to shade, always shade um, pretty dark in, in general. Because uh, sometimes when you shade lightly um, and your hand starts smudging up the screen, it tends to kind of look a little bit grayish. Okay, so we got do do do. We got me do do. And of course, to let's pop this open too because acoustically that will always sound better, right? I never played piano. I know I used to play piano a little bit growing up, but not too much. But I know we had, we also had it upright as well, um, and sh give him some sheet music. Okay, let me just um, move on from there. Okay, we're gonna turn off a couple of these guys here, and then give another. Um, let's see, we got four pips. Okay, I'm gonna check on the other channels here. Let's see about, um, let's look at face. <laughs> a lot of um, very contextual uh, or current current time uh, pandas. So like we'll do, um, well, I, I kind of drew this one for, uh, I'm gonna send out a, um, an email to my mailing list, but I was using this on my website earlier. So I was just, um, Or actually, let's let's do this instead. How about this? We'll do um, a window. So sometimes, if I'm drawing a scene like this, um, I just place certain elements, um, like haphazardly. It's kind of this is kind of fun where you're just trying to build a scene out. Uh, so I'm I'm trying to build out a living room. So it's going to be um, uh, let's see. This is this will be the quarantine panda. So we got a couch. Not to remind everybody what's going on, but uh, this is what everybody's doing. So this is what panda will be doing um, as he's uh, as he's joining the rest of you. So actually, I'm going to put him like this.
he's probably like many people Or actually, he's got. We gotta make room for his belly because he's a uh, he's quite the tubby guy. So I'm just. So this uh, this is what helps to draw um, characters is to kind of think of the overall form. So I kind of didn't do that right there. So um, he's kind of like this big pudgy guy like that, and then that allows me to um, think about the rest of the forms as I'm going through here. So let's make this couch a little bit bigger so we give him some more space. Uh, to uh, stretch out because he is kind of a he is kind of a chubby dude um, so let's get rid of that tangent and then there that feels a little bit better and then we can get um, maybe we make this a three three cushion sofa change his face just a little bit so when I'm drawing digitally it allows you to change a lot change things a lot uh, which can be a good and a bad habit so um, in this case I'm trying to make it in the end I'm just worried about or focused on the final product the final drawing so even if I screw up I'm I'm uh, willing to change it again so that's why you see me messing around and doodling. So sometimes the drawings can get pretty messy, but I can always clean it up later. Okay, so he's just sitting at home. Um, and then, you know, maybe we have things like... Uh, maybe... Let's, let's, let's set this up a little bit more. So let's, uh, let's get, put some more stuff in here and uh, make the window a little bit bigger. So sorry if for those of you who are following, this might seem a bit, uh, it might be a little bit frustrating to, <laughs> for me to change it like this, but uh, maybe just wait till I finish the drawing and then uh, then you can cop copy after me. Uh, let's see here. Uh, just give me a second. I'm kind of off the screen a little bit, so I had to switch pages here. Here, let me just bring it down. There we go, okay. Uh, and then I can add a coffee table uh, right here, you know, maybe there's there's a drink on it, um, you know, add a little cup there. Uh, let's see, let's add some, maybe there's some books and magazines in there or just m random stuff. And then uh, I'm just gonna put some, you guys probably can figure what this is already. I think it's probably pretty apparent by now. <laughs> I feel like at this point, a lot of people are just getting it just because it's like, I wonder if there was like one guy who started doing it and then everybody's like, oh, I didn't think about that. We must get all of them too. But maybe that's a good time to invest in a bidet. Okay. Okay, there we go. And then we get, maybe we put one down here that kind of. Okay. Yeah, so that's how I would draw like a, uh, you know, maybe we could put a tree out there just to show that. Okay. All right, let's see here. We also have a Daryl Dixon panda. What's a Daryl Dixon? This better be kid friendly. 
Oh, I see. Uh, yeah, I guess he can sort of be. I mean, it's not a kid-friendly show, but uh, there's a lot of complicated things with this guy. Okay, Daryl Dixon. Um, I'm trying to remember here. Okay, well, let's let's give us. Let me just do on that for a little bit. Um, and I can just fix this guy up here. Uh, for those of you, you who are unfamiliar who Daryl Dixon is, um, he's from The Walking Dead, which I was, I used to watch it a little bit, but, um, kind of got tired when people kept dying all the time. So I didn't, I actually didn't finish it. Um, which seems quite, uh, appropriate for given these times actually. So uh, probably a bunch of people feel the same way. Okay. I'm going to change this. Maybe just make his... All right, so that's a quarantine panda. A uh, oh, here. Let's save this because uh, you never know um, if this computer is ever going to crash. But you never always got to be prepared. So three twenty one. Okay, let's do um, a Daryl Dixon panda. Um, Daryl Dixon. He's kind of has this. Um, I might have to like bring up a little reference photo, but I know he has, he doesn't really have a beard. He has like a bunch of like scruff and then, um, but to make this a little bit more kid friendly, he'll be, um, he's, uh, he's just a, a guy who protects everybody with, uh, and he has like a little bow and arrow. So that can be kid friendly and he just, just uses it to protect people, right? Um, I think he has a crossbow. The crossbow is used to um, go hunting. <laughs> uh, I'm not drawing a very accurate crossbow, but I'm just trying to say, um, you know, I'm just, just putting in the shapes for it. I guess I guess crossbows are probably more be more visually acceptable than say um, guns, but uh, these days. And I think he has like a vest. He always wears like a like some leather vest because he's so cool. So this is kind of a Daryl, a Daryl Dixon. Um, that'd be a zombie panda. Uh, Braves. Zombies can be kid friendly too. I mean. Yeah, Plants vs. Zombies, right? Okay. All right, that's that one. Let's do... Uh, next one would be... Panda standing in a street... Oh, sorry. So this is... Yeah, so this is... Um, I had to resize the window because I didn't last time I didn't want the full UI to show up so I'm just gonna just resize this just a little bit so that I don't have to scroll around too much yeah uh, let me just finish that so yeah I, I draw very loose and sketchy because um, you know, it, it just, I'm just trying to get the idea down. So you don't always have to come up with a very clean and polished drawing. Uh, I always take, I always like rather have drawings be readable. Like you can figure out what it is 
versus um, having a very pretty and realistic drawing uh, done right because it's almost like there's more life to um, something like this. Okay, uh, a New York City panda. Um, that's kind of tricky. So uh, the tricky thing with drawing cities is that you don't want to get too um, caught up with all the details, right? Um, so I want to. Well, what I want to do is. Um, but drawing buildings in a city is pretty. Um, it's pretty interesting because. Uh, um, you know, you would probably get overwhelmed with all the detail that's there. Um, but what is helpful to draw a big city is to focus not on just the general feel of it and not just get caught up in having to render different signs. I mean, if you want to spend more time on it, you can uh, on, a, on the piece. It's just that uh, it's going to probably frustrate you if you're drawing every single window of every single building. And sometimes there's, there's little um, tips and tricks that you can do to uh, when you're trying to make a, a big city scene and uh, so usually I I would like to hmm, what's a good place to do Times Square yeah so I'm gonna do Times Square um, a Times Square uh, so basically there's like this big uh, uh, display that's like in the middle so it's basically just nothing but billboards so it's not really like it's too complicated it's just that there's a lot of stuff going on and so um, you know you want everything to kind of go towards the middle here uh, this is what's called like one point perspective so uh, it's kind of similar to when you see a pair of train tracks go off into the distance and um, you know you just want to have everything get smaller and shorter uh, the close, the farther away you go. So the closer you get to this little vanishing point, the more um, uh, you know, the smaller everything goes off in the distance. So it's like it's kind of like a mathematical thing, um, and sometimes it can get pretty daunting. But so long as you know, here I'm not being too exact. You know, it's like I could be even more so. Um, but really it's just all just nothing but buildings and billboards. So it's basically a bunch of rectangles that you're drawing just to get to the middle of, uh, of Times Square. I think, is there a tower in the middle? I can't remember. I've been there before and I think there is like a tower like right around here, maybe like a little spire, but then there's like a building behind it that kind of obscures some of it. So um, yeah, so um, I know there's some shops here and stuff, but like I said, just a bunch of billboards and and rectangles and stuff. And so, uh, and then when you get below the camera, so like usually there's a horizon line that uh, allows you to uh, that things start slanting from like this to here. And horizon line is like basically where you're uh, eye level is that like where would the camera be placed uh, uh, vertically and uh, anything above your above that camera is going to slant downward and everything below that camera is going to slope upward and uh, so you get once you learn some perspective it's it's a pretty helpful tool um, I'm just going to go like this where I think there's a street right there if I remember right that's where all the taxis are uh, but since this is a uh, during modern times so it's gonna be um, so that's how I would draw a city so he, he would have like a I'm gonna draw a really tiny panda say like, where is everybody We'll have a little, like a little tumbleweed here. Maybe, maybe I'll fix that a little bit, just to make it feel like it's more like bouncing. Boink, boink. 
Nobody around. Okay. Uh, so that's how you would draw like a, a rough s sketch of a city. Um, let's see. On Facebook, we see a panda finding cute bunnies over a bucket of fried chicken. Uh, let's see what time we, we're at. 11.36. Uh, pandas fighting cute bunnies over a bucket of fried chicken. Uh, what drawing programs am I using? I am using Photoshop. So that's uh, Adobe Photoshop. It's a creative suite. It's a... I, uh, Adobe is the company that makes it and they make a di bunch of different um, software uh, from video editing to animation to um, print and, and book design. So it is a subscription, so you have to pay about, I think, 50 bucks a month to get the whole uh, suite of it. Uh, I mostly work in Photoshop when I'm drawing. But there's other programs that you can use too. I think um, Clip Studio Paint, um, that's another one. There's also GIMP if, it, if you want a free one. Uh, I like Photoshop because that's what most everybody else uses and um, it, uh, it, it served me well and I, I, I'm just used to it so I'm, that's why I'm still going with it. I think if push came to shove, kind of like these times, um, I think uh, you know, I, I'd be open to doing, <laughs> doing a free uh, software base but I, I haven't, honestly haven't practiced that. Uh, but if you're in a bind, um, uh, it definitely helps to, that is an option for you. And for a tablet, I use a Wacom Cintiq, Wacom spelled W-A-C-O-M. Uh, I can link it, um, the Amazon, I can link, uh, add a, an affiliate link in the description after this video is done and to, uh, to kind of show, um, what, uh, what products they offer. The Cintiq is a bit expensive, so I don't know if your mom would buy that for you, because uh, it's um, yeah. Let's let's make let's make his mouth a little bit bigger. Make him make him like really like frustrated. Like so, this is gonna be um, the panda fighting over some bunnies uh, with fried chicken. So the the tricky thing always with doing doing like group shots like this is that uh, you kind of have to like. Um, You kind of have to uh, consider different characters here. So let's see, I'm getting a little bit messed up in my drawing here. So I'm just going to just redo some of it just to clean it up. Because um, he doesn't have that big of a forehead in general. It's like his head's pretty flat. Um, so I just need to make his features just a little bit bigger so that they don't seem to um, uh, to like swallowed up. Okay, so then we're gonna have our fried chicken here, fried chicken pieces. Uh, I'm a dark meat type type of guy, so um, that's what I prefer. There aren't many good ways to eat white meat, although I've I have discovered lately dry brining. <laughs> so this is kind of getting this is appealing more to adults now. Uh, but dry brining look it up it's basically you just salt the chicken um, and just leave it in the fridge for um, for a day or two and it really change it. really makes white meat a lot more palatable and and actually delicious to eat so okay so he's like maybe maybe here we can just go like So he's fighting off bunnies and the bunnies are like Although bunnies are vegetarians so I guess this is kind of interesting <laughs> So I'll be like the bunnies would be like, give me, I've tasted meat. Meat is delicious. He's like, no, this is my meat. This is my chicken. Knock it off. Get away. This is my chicken. I know this is considered family friendly. Well, I guess it is because it's 
very reminiscent of a lot of meal times at home, I'm sure. It's like, give me the chicken. Give us the chicken. And he's like, he's gonna, he's got, he's got him on the back. He's like, I got you. It's like chicken, and then let's let's put one more. Let's put because uh, it it's like a bouquet, you know. Like it's nice to have a three threes or an odd number of things to um to make something interesting. Um, because if you put like four flowers in the vase, it it feels a little bit um, symmetrical. I guess is the way to put it. And um, I always tell people things feel a bit more interesting when you make put them in odds numbers. So I'm just gonna put here. Okay, there we go. Check it, and then we'll just add some energy here, some bubbles, some maybe, they're kind of maybe like spit, <laughs> little droplets of spit, but they really help to make the um, the scene feel a little bit more active and alive. That's why I like rough drawings because it's always these little uh, ticks and marks that, um, I, uh, that I make when I'm making a rough drawing. And because it's not clean, it adds a little bit more um, energy and vibrancy to it. Which is uh, which is really cool, um, but for some reason when you clean up a drawing, it doesn't. Sometimes you kind of you have to be careful not to lose that uh, that energy, that vibrancy in your um, in your original drawing. So uh, here's that. I'm gonna put a little no another KFC stripe. Okay. So that's uh, pandas fighting over some chicken. All right, so let's see. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, you, sorry, a friend of mine was just um, asking to asking where the channel is. So for those of you, um, feel free to just share this channel. Um, share, uh, share the channel. Share the. It, um, or follow me on, on Facebook and Instagram and uh, I'll give out uh, the announcements when they're coming out. Basically, I'm looking to do these uh, scribble times um, during the week. Not sure if I'm going to do it every day, but maybe Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, maybe uh, maybe um, have something where we, you know, we don't I mean, I might be able to do it every day if everybody is uh, is really uh, in wanting that type of content and, and in need of a lot of that content. So, uh, okay, so the next one would be sibling pandas digging in dirt or playing together outside, boy, girl, girl, boy. Uh, oh, I see. Oh, it's this potential commission, is that what I'm saying? Um, so we're gonna do like little pandas here. So I like to include these little like um, these little like round teeth. Um, I got the idea originally from um, Ari, uh, one of my friends, Ari Chung, who's also a, a children's book illustrator. Um, uh, also check out his site because he's also offering free um, free art classes right now. Um, I don't know if he's offering it during the weekend, but um, I'm pretty sure he's doing it for the weekday. Uh, so, but, uh, he, he helped teach me how to make art <laughs> properly. And, uh, I still, you know, we still keep in contact with each other and he's busy with his own ambitions and projects and so forth. And, um, but I'm sure, uh, he would really appreciate that follow. So Ari Chung, A-R-R-E-E-C-H-U-N-G. And, uh, he's done, uh, books like on, um, He's known, I think he's mo well, most well known for his ninja books, but he's also um, done a children's book called Mixed, which is kind of a, it's about like a bunch of these colors, splotches. Um, uh, that live in a neighborhood and they're like, you know, they're not told to mix with one another. And, uh, but of course, uh, 
they do and they see the benefits of that and you see because they mix these colors mix there's also um, new types of colors that are created so uh, okay playing in dirt yes oh but, oh to be young again I'm gonna move this over a little bit so we just get some more so we can get some more space I know some people are have said that um, it might be too easy to make make a character female by adding a bow and some eyelashes but I, I do think like it is a pretty I don't know I find a lot of girls actually like like that like that um, style so to speak and um, and I guess it because it's been used so much it's, it's become like a shorthand now um, to make to make a character feel a little bit more feminine because you know, in some ways I think it's also the accessories too like there's a lot of accessories that um, I see a lot of girls really enjoy wearing and such not to say all girls are like that but um, a large portion of them uh, which I think is why you know you see a lot more uh, Why you see like oh you know certain certain girls toys have a lot more um, customization and, and accessories to them uh, versus like I mean some boy, boys to toys have uh, accessories like different weapons and such so anyways uh, okay I'm supposed to draw like more than once so let's uh, let's just put let's put another kid in the in let's put the younger one like the Maybe the maybe the the baby is just like making dirt angels. So uh, give me a time to uh, actually like, because I know some people are are posting more messages and such. Um, uh, and even texting me so uh, just give me a second as I'm trying to like answer all these questions so uh, but yeah it's uh, but thank thank you so much for tuning in so far it's it's been a lot of fun uh, these these ones are definitely a lot cha more challenging than yesterday's because you guys are definitely giving me a lot more to draw then uh, okay so uh, and then there's one more um, here let's let's we'll just do this so here let's let's have a dirt pile here and then she's she's all covered in dirt so Everybody's dirty. Everybody's dirty. Dirt everywhere. Okay. All right. <laughs> that was pretty tricky. Uh, Ari Chung is spelled A R R E E, by the way. Okay. Um, let's see. We have. Okay. I'm going to check Facebook for a quick second because I know there's some. Um, uh, a panda dog and a panda standing under cherry blossoms or sorry there's one before that that said koala panda or kangaroo panda okay so koala panda and kangaroo pa panda let's uh let's close out some of these layers here so i'm going to leave that one there for now and uh, over here i'm going to draw the koala panda and the kangaroo panda so um i think kangaroos are like I believe they have like these type of ears. I 
me it's kind of a cliche to have um, kangaroos wearing boxing gloves but you know there's a reason why I remember there was this video of uh, here let's put that there here, I'll, just, I'll move him down here for a second there's a video of a man who is uh, trying to protect his dogs away from uh, some kangaroos from a kangaroo that was harassing them and <laughs> the two of them got into like a fist fight and uh, I think the 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 human landed a a right cross on the on the the kangaroo and then the kangaroo was just kind of like taken aback he's like what okay that's right I had to leave room for okay and so because this is a panda we're gonna pandify this and also uh, we'll add another panda here this is going to be a koala panda though or actually I'll, I'll, I'll put the I'll put the I'll, I'll make this just a regular um, baby kangaroo so the because it's a it's a panda we're gonna pandify it so we're gonna add the uh, the black ears give him a black nose Thanks a lot, guys, for hanging out, by the way. How you guys all doing? Anybody else? Uh, I hope you guys are finding this this time enjoyable and, and interesting. <laughs> so um, I'm going to take tomorrow off uh, for streaming, but I hope to do the next one, looking to do it on Monday. So uh, just set your calendars or sign up to the... Um, this subscribe to the YouTube list or the YouTube channel um, and hit the bell for notifications and that would alert you to um, when the next session is going to happen but it's, it will happen pretty much at 11 p.m. or sorry 11 a.m. on um, uh, on YouTube 11 a.m. Pacific time I know in my last post I said 11 I, I just typed in PST, which is Pacific Time, but there's a difference between PST and PDT, and it's like, why do they even have this time? And so I decided just to switch it just to Pacific Time, because we can always look that up later. That's mainly for folks who are probably living elsewhere in the world who don't do daylight savings like we do. I don't know why we do it, but oh well. Okay. Now, and then we got our pan, so I got a panda kangaroo, and then we got a panda koala. Koalas kind of have like big noses like that. Let's make it a little bit wider. Actually, let's make him a little bit cuter. So let's make that nose a little bit smaller. And then he had kind of these fluffy ears, but those be, those will be black. I'll just leave the white in, just kind of. Give him the boxing gloves too. Give him a band. Give him some little legs like that. Okay, so that's a panda. That's a panda kink uh, koala. Uh, let's see. Oh, we're almost at our time, so um, I'll do one last quick drawing because it seems like it's the last one that we have. And then I was gonna show. Uh, someone had just messaged me with some uh, other fan art 
and I'm just gonna I just wanted to show that on um, let's see where is it Let me, can I check my messages here okay all right yes so I think okay I won't be able to see it on my desktop unfortunately but I'll, I'll bring up my phone in a bit um, let's see here a panda dog and a panda uh, panda standing under a cherry, a cherry blossom so this will be my last drawing um, So I'll draw the panda first because that's like the quickest thing for me to draw. Because I practiced it a lot, obviously. It's the thing that I draw the most often these days. Um, and he's changed over the years, you know. There's been times when um, when I've drawn him one way and then several months later I draw him a different way. So if you look at the older comics like Peanuts or, you know, like Snoopy, like or uh, Garfield, they look completely different when from their first when they were first drawn. Um, and then I'm going to draw a dog. Yeah, I'll, I'll make this one a spotted dog like this. And. Um, Yeah, so it's a, it's all a just a matter like they change because like the more we draw things, the we start finding different ways to draw it, or maybe we don't like the way that they're drawn after after a while, so we just start changing them up to kind of fit, fit our sensibilities. And um, let's see here, let's move this okay. So a cherry blossom is kind of very. Um, it's if you look at a real cherry blossom, it tends to be very angular. There's lot, lots of um, sometimes there's lots of these really big, bulbous type of um, uh, shapes to them. So um, I would highly recommend just like going out and studying uh, foliage, and they'll ha also have these like if you see a, a, a cherry blossom during or a cherry tree during the winter, uh, this is kind of what they look like. What they have all these like, um, you know, they're not. You know they they kind of have these lumpy things and then all the branch all these smaller branches kind of stick up and so um what i'm going to go with that is i'm going to go like this and then i'm just going to make a, a, a overall big shape where it's going to feel like like a big tree but i'm not going to draw every single leaf i'm just going to draw just the um just a texture of it you know so uh it's kind of like drawing a big cloud but um, adding some variance to it so I'm not, you know, making it look a little bit boring. But you can add some variance to kind of make it more interesting. Add some petals that fall down. Um, you know, just make it look really rough. And then if you just do enough of them, then uh, it actually starts looking like a, like a real tree. So anyways, so that's that. Um, thank you guys for your time and, and for hanging out. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the sketch time. Thanks for all the ideas too. Um, I want to show a couple. Um, Andrew, you might be, I don't know if you're still watching, but uh, can you, is it okay to show, to show your picture of your, your two kids uh, holding the, drawing um, as I'm doing that I'm going to show uh, let's see here I'm gonna show this let me pull up my Instagram and show the message oh I don't think actually I think the message disappeared <laughs> Ada sent me a miss uh, and Ada Javier sent me a message and the message just disappeared just as I was about to type as, as I was about to click on it and uh, whoops okay well unfortunately I won't be able to show that so sorry about my apologies for barely missing that uh, we can maybe we can catch that next time
So anyways, thanks a lot for hanging out with the panda scribbles or for the, um, or sorry, let's see here. So this is the, here, I'll show this here. I'll just switch my camera to here. And here uh, there's um, Jenny and Andrew uh, showing off the kids. There's a little bit of lag, so I'm having a bit of trouble trying to focus on this. But uh, you can kind of see that they have the television up and uh, they're quite catching it. It's not really focusing, but anyways, maybe I can go back here and show, expose. <laughs> well, anyways. Um, well, thanks again, everyone. Uh, so I'm going to take a break for tomorrow for the Panda, uh, for Scribble time. Uh, let's do, uh, we're going to be doing it again on Monday and depending if on the response, if more people want to keep doing this, we can keep doing it on Tuesday or, um, Wednesday or Thursday, you know, but maybe right now the tentative plan could be just Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, if there's more interest in it, then I can do more uh, every day because uh, I'm sure there's a lot of these. Um, I just want to help at least parents and uh, people who are at home who are looking to improve their skills or maybe they want to teach their kids some art uh, just to have some interaction with the real artist. So um, thanks again. And uh, feel free to just visit YouTube at... Um, the Punching Pandas channel at YouTube. And I also have work on punchingpandas.com as well. And uh, feel free just to browse around and see uh, more artwork there. So thanks again, and you guys have a great day.